Aid workers, as we've been seeing, have been flooding into the country. A response team from UK-based disaster relief charity Shelterbox arrived in Nepal on Monday morning. And here with me is Eva Durr, who's one of the organisation's volunteers. Thank you so much for being with us. So, so your team arrived only in the last uh, 24, 36 hours. In the brief conversations you've had with them, what are they saying to you about just how bad the situation is? Yeah, it's really hard to get through as our mobile phone nets, networks are down, but they're reporting that the air is really tense, the atmosphere is really tense, people are still fearing aftershocks, and it's just the devastation is huge, as we can see from the footage. Uh, tell me more about Shelterbox. Tell me about the sorts of stuff that you actually send in. Obviously, we've got just an enormous tent. In, that is part of the equipment that you send in, in one of these boxes, is it? Yeah, so we are a disaster relief organisation specialising on shelter. That's why we're sending these disaster relief tents. And we're also having, so we're basically having a broad range of shelter solutions here. So right now we're looking also at sending, sending shelter repair kits to just help people um, in their rebuilding efforts. So it's basically um, plastic sheeting and other construction materials alongside of these tents. Uh, take me through the, the other stuff in that box because obviously the, the, the tent is crucial because we've seen all of those people sleeping out in the open and uh, open to the elements but you've got other stuff in there that could prove vital. Yeah, so we basically pack these boxes we, with everything we believe to be essential in the aftermath of a disaster. So we also have blankets, ground sheets, mosquito nets, water filtration, really important for, for safety as well, uh, lamps, kids' activity packs, toolkits, water carriers, so everything one needs in the immediate aftermath. And how many of these boxes are you hoping to actually get into Nepal? So we are, we are looking at sending different things, as I mentioned before. So we do have a bit of pre-positioned stock from a disaster we responded to last year. So we do have an initial consignment there, and we're also looking at, right now, sending um, some of the shelter repair kits and more to come. You yeah. mentioned the, the, the boxes that were there when you were dealing with the landslides last year. I think we're about mm -hmm. to see the pictures of that because uh, they were deliberately left because this is a region prone to exactly this sort of thing. But presumably you need masses, masses more. Yeah. What sort of uh, uh, coordinated activity are you having with the government? Because A, you have to get them in mm -hmm. and then B, you actually have to get them to the areas where it's most needed. Yeah, exactly. Logistics is a massive challenge at the moment. So we're looking at coordinating with other aid organisations as well as with the Nepalese government that's going to hopefully help us to also reach rural areas that are a lot harder to reach than urban areas. And we do really want to reach the most vulnerable. So that's really key for us. So far with your team, I assume like many of the uh, aid agencies, they are around the capital, Kathmandu. Uh, to get further afield, you need helicopters, don't you? Uh, is there any chance, because the government is saying they are short of helicopters, to do anything? Yeah, right now it's really hard to gauge for me what we can do, but we are trying and we're being really creative here to, uh, to find every, every opportunity we have and every opportunity we can to, to get kit out there. And we do have a lot of contacts that, that email us on an hourly basis here, offering their help and offering their assistance. And we are really open to everything we can do. And we usually, um, with our creativity, are, are very good in getting, getting kit to those. Just going back to, to, to the water that you have yeah. there in terms of, you know, I was saying there in our main introduction that just about every level, whether it's aid agencies, people who have survived, uh, governments, water, mm. that simple thing is absolutely crucial. That's how, it, how far Nepal, in a sense, has gone into rewind. Yeah, exactly. Right now, it's always in the immediate aftermath. It's really important to have clean water. So we also do um, include a water purification system in our boxes that can be helpful in, in this regard. Uh, now, you have a variety of, uh, of shelter boxes, a variety of repair kits, because one of the things I was interested in when I was reading the information about your organisation, you are very keen, you think it is very important for people to try if at all possible, to rebuild mm. where they originally were. Yeah, it's actually incredible when you're on the ground, you really feel people are picking up and rebuilding their lives quite quickly and trying to rebuild their homes quite quickly. And what we really want to encourage them to do is to do that and to give them the materials to really help themselves as well. Uh, there'll be many instances there. We've seen just the extent of the devastation. There'll be many instances where that is, that is simply impossible. Exactly. Uh, and that is a problem, isn't it, of, of displaced people in their thousands and potentially hundreds of thousands. 
Yeah, exactly. That's why we are looking at different shelter solutions for different needs. So if people really can't return to, to their homes, then we're going to look at possibly setting up uh, tent cities outside of Kathmandu. Just a final brief sentence or two, because you have experience of this country. Mm. Can it bounce back? It, it, this is a, a devastating blow. I think it's really hard to, uh, for countries in general to deal with disasters like this. And having been there myself, the infrastructure was really bad before and now it's just the damage is just so large that I think the government just uh, needs assistance wherever it can. So that's why we are there assisting alongside the government, alongside other humanitarian organizations, alongside local communities really, to really make, um, make this immediate aftermath of the disaster more yeah. It is an beautiful. absolutely colossal task for, for just about everyone involved. Uh, Eva Doyle, thank you so much for thank coming in and telling us a little of the work that you are currently doing. Thank you.